I hate peeling peaches, tomatoes, fava beans. Bananas are okay. Once I worked with a chef who had me peel, wait for it, peas. He said, people who don't peel peas are not nice people. I'm like, I'm nice, I just don't peel peas. Hi, I'm Melissa Clark. I'm a food columnist and reporter for the New York Times and NYT Cooking. And I'm here in the beautiful NYT Cooking Studio Kitchen to make a caramelized tomato tart tatin because it's summer and the tomatoes are gorgeous and it is just a lovely pastry. Tart tatin is a traditional French pastry usually made with apples. You make a caramel on the bottom of a skillet you put your apples, then you put some puff pastry on top and you bake it and then you turn it over and you have this gorgeous apple tart that's really easy to make. So what I did in this recipe was substitute cute little cherry tomatoes for the apples. I still use a caramel and I also add Kalamata olives which make it just briny and salty and I also add caramelized onions which have like a sweet savory flavor. It is beautiful. It is so summery. It's exactly the thing to do when you want like a show-stopping. I mean, I would eat it as a dinner entree. I mean, it's very substantial or as an appetizer or just because you want to eat something gorgeous. I have some all butter puff pastry here. If you can find the stuff made with all butter, it is really much better than the non-butter. However, either one will work. If you want to just use a regular pie crust for this, that works too. It doesn't get puffy, but it gets golden brown and flaky and it's really good. And I have done that with a homemade pie dough. If you ever have homemade pie dough hanging out in your freezer, this is a great place to use it. So I wanna cut it into a cap that's gonna fit on top of the pan, just on the inside. All skillets are a little bit different. So even if this is like a nine inch skillet or maybe it's a 10 inch skillet, depending on where you measure it, it's very frustrating that they are not standard. The way to get this to work best is just to measure it and then you can measure the pastry. So this is, yeah, see this is 10 and a half inches and on the bottom, this is seven inches. What size skillet is it? Somewhere between seven, and I, I would call this a nine inch. Maybe it's a 10 inch. Anyway, use whatever skillet you have, just measure it. We know this is 10 and a half inches, so I'm gonna make this 10 inches. I'm gonna cut this from the middle, I'm marking it. Here's another thing, you don't have to worry about being exact. If it's a little bit too big, you just tuck it under, and if it's a little bit too small, it's not gonna matter because when you flip it over, no one is gonna see it. And then cut it into an approximate circle. Never throw out your scraps. I'm gonna put this back in the freezer. I'm not gonna use it right now, but if I wanted to, I would probably make cheese straws out of this. I'm just gonna put this whole thing in the fridge right now. You wanna keep it cold, because if it gets too warm, it will stick to this cutting board, and then you will never get it off, and you'll be sad. In this bowl, I have three large red onions that have been sliced. We have done this ahead, so you don't have to watch me cry when I do it in front of you. Red onions are great because they're very sweet. You could also use regular onions, white onions, Spanish onions, it doesn't matter. Once you caramelize them, you're not gonna taste a huge difference, but I do think that the red ones are slightly sweeter. A Little bit of butter. Let's do a little viewer's poll. Is this a lot of butter or a little butter? To me, this is just a little bit of butter, but maybe people out there think it's a lot of butter. You think it's a lot of butter. Vaughn thinks it's a lot of butter. I mean, we all love butter. And you know, whenever you cook anything in melted butter, you wanna wait for the foam to subside, right? Cause then you know the butter is gonna be hot enough. So see all that white foam? We're gonna heat the butter until the foam starts to dissipate. There you go. Oh, and look, it's starting to get a little bit golden. We're getting like a slight brown butter action. That's great, extra flavor. Okay, I'm gonna lower the heat to medium. I'm adding just a pinch of sugar. And this is just to help the, the uh, color. It's gonna make it a little bit browner. This is gonna take 15 to 20 minutes for the onions to really cook down. If you can see, I'm actually already starting to get some nice color on these. And now would be a good time if you haven't, I don't know, rinsed your tomatoes or call your mom. Do something nice for your next 15 minutes. Pay attention. If you start to smell something that smells too brown, you know it's time to turn down the heat. Don't stand here like this, this is bad. Okay, I'm going away. <laughs> so you see how that is starting to brown at the edges of the pan, probably because I turned it up too high? You add just a little bit of water to the pan, it deglazes it and it helps the onions cook. This is what we are looking for. 
Look at how beautiful that is. The onions are very soft and floppy. They haven't cooked down to a jam. They're still onions, but they just have this beautiful brown color and a nice silky texture. All that brown stuff on the bottom of the pan is now absorbed into the onions and that's where the flavor is, so that's great. And these can just hang out while we make the caramel. But before I do that, I am gonna wash this out because I wanna start with a clean pan for the caramel. Look how pretty all this is. The, it's a seriously pretty mise en place. You don't have to use a mix of colors. You can use all one color tomato, whatever you have. But I mean, this is very, very charismatic. And also I need to point out this little dude. Look how cute, little itty bitty tomato. Like a little jelly bean. Let's make caramel. Heat is gonna be on medium. I like to use the wet method. So I'm combining sugar and water in the skillet at the same time. If I just use sugar in this pan and let it melt and caramelize, it would be a little bit faster, but it would also be a little bit riskier because you could get little sugar crystals. It's harder to control it, it goes faster. What I'm doing is melting all the sugar crystals in the water and then I'm evaporating off the water. So it takes a little more time. It's like an insurance policy. If you are nervous about caramel, which I guess I am a little nervous about caramel, even though I made caramel all the time. I just like the wet method. You see how the sugar is turning to syrup. That's a sugar. And then as I swirl it, it melts. I find this very satisfying. One little corner over here doesn't want to melt. So now that it's all melted, I'm just going to let it hang out. And I'm going to swirl the pan every once in a while. Swirling the pan helps mix the sugar syrup so that it caramelizes evenly and you don't get dark spots. Should you start to see any kind of crystallization or burning, you can immediately pick it up and just go choop, choop, choop. This is cool, as you're watching it, can you see that the bubbles are bigger and like almost slower, they're more viscous because as the water is evaporating from the sugar syrup, it is getting thicker. Don't try to do this in a really dark pan. It's just harder to see the color of the caramel. So this is just a warning. See how it's browning around the edges and not in the center? That is why we want to swirl it. I can smell that it's turning into caramel. Look at that color. Okay, so we have caramel right now. This is a very light caramel. The lighter your caramel, the sweeter it is. The darker your caramel, the less sweet it is. As the sugar caramelizes, it loses its sweetness. It gets more of a um, toasty taste. So this is the color I want. I'm turning off the heat. What color is that? Is it the color of an Irish setter? Do I love to say that? Yes, I do. And when it gets to be that perfect color, it's off the heat. It's cooking in the residual little heat of the pan and woo, stop the cooking with a little bit of vinegar. It cools it down immediately, and it also tames the sweetness. Look at that. Kalamata olives, you could use any kind of olives. You wanna pit them, because you're nice. And then now I'm gonna add my beautiful tomatoes. Look at that. So your hands are your best bet for the onions. You just wanna scatter them and make sure you get a nice even distribution of onions. I'm just gonna move this. The burner is very hot. There, you wanna just cover all the tomatoes with onions, like that. Just a little bit of salt, maybe a little more salt. Some pepper, and uh, thyme leaves. These are really nice, it just gives it a lovely, fresh flavor. You know what else would be good on this? Anchovies. Chopped up anchovies mixed into that onion. Oh my God, that would be amazing. Okay, I'm gonna get the pastry to put on top of this. I love a giant fridge. I do not have one at home. So all I'm gonna do is just lay this right on top and I'm gonna tuck it in around the edges. And again, don't forget, no one is gonna see this part so you don't have to worry too much. And now I'm gonna score the top of this and that's just to let the steam out while this is baking. Yeah, my oven has been preheated to 425, so you always wanna do that before you start because this thing comes together pretty quickly. And I'm gonna pop it in the oven. Oh, beautiful. The moment of truth. Is it gonna come out of the pan? Now, I know this is the scariest part. It looks more intimidating than it is. As long as you don't let this 
get completely cool, it's not gonna glue itself onto the bottom of the pan. And then before you even do anything, take a little knife or an offset spatula and go around the sides just to make sure to loosen the pastry. You can see it kind of moving. This is a good sign, because if it moves, it is obviously not stuck. Bravery. Take your plate, put it upside down. Who doesn't love the big blue oven mitts? All right. So hold it from both sides like that. I'm gonna get a smaller plate, because it's just easier to hold. Makes everybody less nervous. So then, yeah, see this is easy. Then you can just hold it like this. And a one, and a two, and a three, Whee! Ta da Oh my god, it's perfect. This is definitely best warm, but it's also good at room temperature. So if you wanna make it earlier in the day, unmold it while it's warm and serve it a couple of hours later, it holds up really well. It also reheats well. Get all the little bits. Deliciously messy. I'm so excited to eat this. Mm. It's so good. I mean, the tomatoes are amazing, but to me the best part is the combination of the sweet, sweet caramelized onions and the, the olives. Like that salty with the sweet, and then you just have the juiciness of the tomatoes, and of course the buttery crust. It's so good, you guys, you gotta make this. Please make this. Find the recipe at nytcooking.com and then leave a comment and let us know how it came out because we want to hear from you. And that is all. I'm going to finish this slice right now. Bye. <laughs>